Good day. So today we're going to do a video on how to put the winter wheels on a Honda Civic. This applies to lots of different vehicles. In this case, I think it's a 2013 Honda Civic Touring. I've had this car for, I don't know, four or five years now. Still don't know what year it is. I can't seem to remember. It's just a Sunday car. We don't drive it very often at all. A lot of Sundays we don't drive it anyway, so it's pretty low kilometers. So we're going to put on these set of winter wheels. These are winter wheels that came from Honda. They have uh, the direct tire pressure monitoring system in them, and they're a different size. So, let's take a look at this. These are Yokohamas, and the tire size is over here, 205-55R16. You can see that they're starting to crack on the edges. I keep saying this is the last year we're going to use them, but they keep getting put back on. So you can see they got the bolted uh, valve stems on them. So these are, like I said, the direct, not the indirect. Indirect tire pressure monitoring is just for watching the wheel speed sensors. And if you got a wheel that's spinning differently than the others, apparently that means that you've got a flat tire. It probably uses some uh, logic to figure that out. These. Uh, on the touring cars, and I think the next model down, have these uh, aluminum wheels, and they're quite thick. They stick out a long way. I tried to get replacement tires that had a nice, thick uh, bead guard on them, but I couldn't find anything. I didn't want to buy Michelin's again. These are Iron Man, I moves, whatever that is. All I know is that, like any tire on this vehicle, is just going to rot off before we wear it out. So we didn't want to spend a lot of money on tires as a result. But they're going to be a 17 inch wheel. They're an inch bigger. But normally when you go to winter wheels, you put on like an inch smaller wheel. And just make sure that it clears the, uh, the brake hardware on the inside. So, obviously you need to get the, the wheels like I was talking about. You want to check the uh, face where it mounts against the uh, rotors and clean that off with a wire brush if they're rusty hammer off any scale. You'll need a, a power bar. You could use the tools that are in the trunk of the car to do this, but that would be kind of slow and painful. If you're broken down on the side of the road, of course, you go in the trunk and get your stuff and go for it. Obviously, try to find a safe place to, to change your tire. But in this case, uh, you'll need to get a, a wheel socket. This is a... 19 millimeter. Sorry for the sun, guys. It's going to be another one of those days. 19. A couple different options. That's like a plastic one. This is from Sealy. Ordered that from uh, the UK. Sealy. These are some uh, off brand uh, Chinese sockets here. That one obviously doesn't belong in there. These are Teflon coated instead of plastic coated. Doesn't really matter. On some wheels, you need to yank this off, so make sure it's removable. So uh, we're going to go with uh, the orange is a 19. This power bar is way too long for this job. When I put the wheels back on, I'm going to grab onto it like part way down the power bar. Otherwise, you're going to over torque it way too much. Not going to use a tire, uh, a torque wrench to do this job. Just use hand tools today. Don't have my impact gun kicking around. Obviously, you need a tire pressure uh, gauge. You should set all your tires up before you put them on. I'm not going to do it that way because I don't have my air compressor here either. I'm kind of short on tools, but this job needs to happen. Because you should have your tires all at the right pressure when you uh, calibrate your tire pressure monitoring system. And uh, to do that on the vehicles that are indirect, you just push the menu button and go into the options and you'll see uh, TPMS in there and you can just calibrate it. This car is a touring car with the uh, navigation and uh, it's a little bit different, right? Because like when you go in reverse on this car, the reverse shows up in here. Whereas on the lower model cars, the reverse camera pops up in there somewhere. So uh, unfortunately the menu is different. And I've not found out how you're supposed to recalibrate tire pressure monitoring system on these tires. Last year I got a flat with one of these wheels and it didn't tell me. 
it didn't even tell me the system wasn't working. I was not very impressed. And the tires are very unreliable because of these bolted on uh, valve stems. They're a real step backward, unfortunately. So I checked out the uh, threads on these. These are M12 by 1.5 with a bulge. I wanted to get new uh, lug nuts for this car, but they didn't have any in town. That's something you should probably consider replacing as we take these apart. I'll show you uh, what the problem is there. Before you put it up on the jack, you should loosen all of your lug nuts. Just go around and do all 20 of them just a little bit. That way it's easier to work with. I've got a big jack here. This is like a three ton jack. It's an off-road jack. Works well in the winter. But it's almost too tall for this job. So if you look under here, there's a, a step where it, you jack up against. There'd be one near each wheel. And normally I'd put a piece of rubber there, but I can't even get this piece of rubber into there. On the back wheel, again, you can see it is right here, through here. This is the uh, step where you grab onto it. You can actually lift the whole side of the car off, up at once if you lift in the middle, but I don't recommend doing that. It's kind of hard on the drip edge. And the reason I put the rubber on the jack is to protect the drip edge. You can actually get a, uh, an adapter to put on your jack with like a slot cut into it. And that uh, makes it even easier to lift up your vehicle. So I'm just trying to think if there's anything else we've got to talk about. Oh yes, yeah, so you got to pick your tires and where you're going to put them. So you got to inspect your tires and verify if they're directional or not. And then I always put my best two tires on the front of the vehicle. And if they're directional, you got to keep that in mind. So I kind of go through them and put them at each corner of the vehicle so I know where I'm going to put them before I start. So like I said, you'll go through and separate your uh, left tires and your right tires. And then from you take your best left and your best right and put them at the front and put the other tires at the back. You'll verify that they're not worn out yet. It's a bit deceiving, like the wear bar. I don't know if I can get it or not. Really doesn't apply for winter tires. Like this, these tires are kind of marginal. You could measure it with a, a tire gauge. I don't know if you can see it or not in the video, but they're starting to get some cracks in between the treads. So these tires are going to get this one last run out of them. If we have to go on any big trips, I'll just replace them. But this car is just for bumming around town. So it doesn't need to have very good tires. So uh, I will uh, just put up the camera on the tripod and then we'll start taking tires off. Alright, so I got the uh, parking brake set on the car. I've got the three wheels loose. I'm just going to just loosen off this one. I noticed that the other uh, front wheel, the bolts are were not on very tight. A little bit looser than uh, my preference would be. Again, these front ones are loose for some reason. Oh, I know. So I had this out of garage because I've got a problem with my brake rotors and they must not have tightened them up very much. Now I remember the situation on this vehicle. So because we don't drive this car very much, there's a rust ring on the front rotors that rubs and makes noises when you're going down the highway and whatnot. We had it at the garage to check it out because I couldn't figure what was going on. The wheel bearings were tight and the uh, CVs were tight. I like I said, I couldn't figure it out. And I had them check it out and I never retorked it after I had it there. I'd forgotten about it. So anyway, we'll lift this up. So when you lift the vehicle, you don't lift it up very high. You only lift it up high enough to get the uh, tire off the ground. So you're gonna unload the suspension. If you had a, a low, low profile jack, you could reach in and lift it by the uh, lower control arm or the rear axle. But this is not uh, the right jack to do that. 
So got that up in the air. Should have a spot to put the lug nuts when you're done. You don't want to get any dirt on the threads. The order you take them off isn't significant. The order you put them back on is. It's handy to have a deep socket so you can get them out of here. Because the, the bolts are kind of recessed into here. And we're not using a jack stand for this, so you can't let anybody go under the vehicle. Don't let your pets go under the vehicle or any of that. If you had a flat tire, it would be difficult to uh, get the jack under the vehicle, even the factory jack. Unless it's very, very thin, it can be hard to lift the car. So take care of your tires, check the pressure from time to time, and replace them before they wear out completely so you don't get into that situation. So hopefully we can get this to come off without much trouble. All right, so I'm gonna have to get my uh, sledgehammer here. I'll be back in a second. So we're gonna just use the sledgehammer to knock the tire off. You're just trying to hit the rubber at first and hopefully that works. And if you have to, you can get a little more rough on it and hit the wheel. Just take a look at it. Actually, I'm going to take the camera off the uh, stand here and we'll take a look at things a little bit more carefully before we go any further. All right, so when removing this wheel, it was uh, stuck to the hub, that being because the uh, wheels are hub-centric on this vehicle. And uh, so the hub, the big ring there, you know, whatever many millimeters that is, when you put a wheel on, you should put some anti-seize on it. You can use like the gray anti-seize or the copper anti-seize. I prefer the copper, but I have that at my other garage. I don't have it here. When you look at these lug nuts, this is not a taper, it's actually a cone. So Hondas have cones, I don't know what other vehicles have cones. But uh, when I went to the garage to, to buy some more uh, lugs, they only had f the flat tapers, so I couldn't use them. These ones, you can see the edges are getting kind of sharp. So they're wearing out. They just don't look very sightly. You can't see them with the aluminum wheels, but with the steel wheels you can see them. Not that the steel wheels look all that good anymore, but hey, putting a hundred bucks of lug nuts on the car can make it look pretty good. So this face here on the aluminum wheels, you can probably see some marks on it from me scratching it. So uh, there's steel embedded into the wheel, and that'll give you a loose wheel and make it fall off after. When the garage had this off, they should have uh, buffed this down. So what I do is I take a, a regular file and drag it on an angle and I keep doing it until I remove all of the rust and I get a perfectly flat edge. You go from a couple different angles. I guess it's just a square, but if you imagine just getting a, a small file that fits into the wheel, you can do that and uh, flatten out the wheel, otherwise it couldn't easily fall off. I paint the uh, rotor face with a bit of bumper black paint, which I'm completely unprepared to do this job today, so I'm not going to show you everything I normally do. It's just uh, winter came a month early this year. I normally, at this point, I'd have the hot water out and I'd wash all the wheels before I put them away, and I can't do that either, so they're going to sit covered in salt, which is not ideal. When you have the wheel off, you should kind of just poke around and try to find any problems with anything that might be loose. So these edges here are uh, building up and uh, rubbing on the uh, caliper carrier. 
so it makes a bit of noise when I drive. It's kind of embarrassing sounding actually. If I had a file right now I would file off this. You could probably chip it off with a hammer. But I don't really want to do that because you're hammering like directly on the wheel bearing. And these wheel bearings are like press fit so they're not that easy to replace so I'm just going to be gentle with them and not worry about the scraping sound that you can hear. You can take a look and see if any of the boots are damaged on anything. Just generally look around. The sway bar link seems like it's good. The wiring is out of the way for the ABS. The brake hose is out of the way. Just kind of check things out. Make sure you got no leaks on your uh, brake fittings. So we've got that. I'm going to go and line up my tires now. I haven't gone through and picked their locations yet. So I'll do that now. Then we'll uh, put on the first wheel. Alright, so i got my tires laid out. Everything's set up ready to go. When I checked the tire pressure of that one there, it was only 17 PSI and the other ones are all at 30. So I know that that back tire has a problem. I put it at the back for a reason. It's one of the uh, more worn out tires. None of these tires are directional, so I can't really show you anything about that. But if you got a low tire, try to put it on the uh, back of the uh, driver's side, perhaps. That way, if you walk up to it and you see it is down, you know you got to put some more air into it. Because these things, even though they have TPMS monitoring systems in them, I don't really trust them. So it's good to keep an eye on your tires. And you probably look at the passenger side less often. So, uh... I cleaned off the uh, face of the wheel. It looks good in there. There's no chunks or anything. So we'll take a bit of the anti seize, which is going to be frozen solid. So that's the problem. I should have brought this inside and warmed it up. It's just going to make it harder to take the wheel off. We're not going to be able to do that. So we're going to take the wheel, slip it on. You don't lift it up the car up very high right because depending on the size of the wheel it could be very heavy and you want to be able to get this on you could use like a, a pry bar and lift up on it if it's a heavy heavy wheel this one's not that bad so you just try to get one lug on or two and this is sort of where it becomes important as to what you're doing so I'll try to get the camera in closer It's hub centric, but you still want to get your uh, lug nuts in the, the right position. So when you put it on, you want the cone to fit directly into the wheel. You don't want the wheel turned to the side or out of uh, adjustment. So I put on the top one, then I put on a bottom one, and I'll show you how I do it. Because you don't want to lose a wheel kill you it could kill somebody else at the very least you could go to fine for in Ontario anyway you get a fine for wheel separation which is a, a lot of money so this is a good example as I'm putting in that lug there's a big gap on one side and not on the other side so I know it's not lined up so you jiggle it around a bit That one's in seated nicely all the way around. And that one seated in nicely too. And then you hit the wheel a couple times and see if anything moves. And I got like another half turn by doing that. So it's good to do that. By the time you put the wrench on that these things should be pretty tight. I just need to be doing the final torque. It's about minus seven degrees out. I'm not sure if I mentioned that earlier in the video. If any of these go on and off hard, take a look inside them and check the threads and see what's going on. Don't use open lug nuts on the, for the winter especially, because they'll rust and grow and you'll never be able to get them off. Give the wheel a kick on both sides. So you get a bit more of a turn by doing that. The 
I said, you want it to be uh, pretty tight by the time you're uh, ready to put it on the ground. So here we are. We've got, the, like I said, the parking brake is on. We're going to lower the vehicle down. And we're going to start tightening the wheel. And I always tighten each wheel as I go around. I never do it after the fact. I don't move on to the next wheel until the wheel I'm started on is finished. Try to lower it down through the control. Like I said this is a long power bar, so we're not going to go to town on these. I like to snug one up. Feels pretty good. And move on to the one opposite. This part I think you'd be familiar with, but we'll go through it just in case. So you always go across if you have like five. You don't do the adjacent ones unless you have like a four bolt wheel or maybe smart cars have three bolt wheels maybe. So you get that one snugged up. Check the other one, see if it moved or not. It's good. So now we've gone from here to here to here. So that one's pretty good. This one's gotten loose because the wheel's getting closer to the hub now. You can use a torque wrench for this. But bear in mind if you have a flat on the side of the road, the car does not come with a torque wrench. So you should get a feel for this. Of course, the consequences are high if you goof it up. So if you don't know what you're doing, you could have someone help you the first time you do a wheel, just so they can teach you what the kind of feel you're looking for with this. I wouldn't recommend using an X. Those are really hard to use. And if the wheel is really tight, you can put this facing out, put your foot on the bar and push down on it. You might want someone to hold this so it doesn't twist on you. I had a Pontiac vibe and the wheel studs were very soft and if you did this it would snap the wheel stud off sideways. So anyway, we've gone across the pattern. All of them should be tight, but maybe you forgot, you goofed up, you got out of position. So you can start where you started out before. We're going to go around one at a time now. That one was a little bit loose. You kind of catch that as you're going around. As you find out what the normal feeling is for all of them and if one of them isn't quite normal it'll go down. When you're doing this you really you should have like a straight arm otherwise you put a lot of pressure on your shoulder and that can cause trouble later on as I found out. You've got to have good body ergonomics when you're doing this. So we've done a one front wheel and uh, now I guess we will pop over and do a back wheel. Assume that the jack fits under here. I haven't checked yet. This jack is amazing for outdoor work. It's just a Chinese jack that Pro Eagle has modified. They put a skid plate on it and bigger wheels. They charge a lot of money for it. That would be my one uh, sour grape with this would be the uh, price of the thing. Take all your tools to the next wheel. This will be the last wheel we do for this video. So the important part here is this to see how I lifted up the vehicle. And uh, when you're done, you could go around the vehicle one more time and check all the lug nuts, make sure they're all still tight. And if they're not, ask yourself, think about it, figure out why they're not tight. Because it can happen, usually it's because the wheel shifts after you put it down on the ground or you go for a drive. 
So you'll, like I said, you'll get all the wheels done, you check them one more time, go for a drive for 20 minutes or something, pardon me, and then you come back and you check them one more time, make sure they're tight. And then like uh, however many miles later you should check it again, especially if you're new at this, because you don't want to uh, have a loose wheel, have it come off. Because if you have a wheel come off completely, I saw one vehicle, actually the guy I sold my van to, I'm trying to understand what happened to him exactly. It happened before he bought it, but his wheel came off and got stuck in the wheel well and went straight back. And it tore up the whole fender and then the uh, filler was actually like flipped upside down. It pushed it in so far. It was quite amazing actually. So it would be very hard to get the uh, wheel back on because if you lose a wheel you'll either break the studs off or you'll lose all of the lug nuts. One or the other. And regardless of which of those two things happens you're going to need to get your vehicle carried to the garage to get new studs put on more than likely or just have to buy some uh, lug nuts. And it happens very fast. There was one day I actually I messed it up on one of my vehicles and I didn't tighten down the wheels. I was working in the dark, busy, forgot where I was at with the one wheel. And uh, I only got five minutes, I could feel some banging sound. And I thought, like, maybe I'll ignore it. Maybe just keep going. But then, it, and luckily I didn't because I pulled over and all of the uh, lug nuts had backed off. And when that happens, you should really consider having your studs replaced. You should take the wheel off and inspect them and see if they've been stretched or damaged in any way. So you might see something out of place with this vehicle here, with this wheel rather. Hondas appear to be notorious for having bad back brakes. I've had the calipers replaced on this once and they didn't last very long. And you can see that uh, the wear pattern is quite poor on here. It doesn't help that I park in the dirt, that's not good for them. Again you check the springs and the struts the uh, cables and the hoses and everything. Make sure everything is working right. Parking brake is on the back here. I don't know. I'm not very happy with the Honda. I'm gonna try to remain positive. It hasn't broken down on us to the point we couldn't drive it as of yet. <laughs> I'll just say that. For a Sunday car it's not very reliable. Everything seems to be made out of cheap parts. But hey, I better try to keep positive. So anyway, we're gonna, normally you would put some anti-seize on the hub here or on the wheel, whichever one suits you, it doesn't really matter. Don't go under the vehicle. Put the wheel back on as quickly as possible. You should have the wheel staged and ready to go so you don't leave your work area because you're responsible for the vehicle while it's up in the air. And uh, you'll just pop it back on. So uh, as part of the drive, you should recalibrate your tire pressure sensors and you should also go to the gas station and pump up your tires if you haven't uh, done that in advance. That's one thing I'll do as part of my test drive on this vehicle is go to the gas station and fill them up, especially this tire here. I've had trouble with it before. I put a red mark on it when I took it to the garage the last time I got this wheel fixed. This stupid thing is leaking again. The uh, bolted valve stems are very unreliable. Which is weird because some transport trucks have bolted valve stems and they don't have any problem. But that's uh, where we're at. So thank you for watching the video. Have a good day.